very good afternoon to everyone. Today we will be presenting on the case of Disneyland Paris. We will be talking about the cultural perspective in relation to the failure of Disneyland Paris. And these are the names of our group members. Regarding the overview, we will be talking, rather, we will be examining the, the failure of Disneyland Paris due to Disney's ineffective culture communication. We'll be talking about in three aspects. That is, uh, the first, firstly, it will be regarding Walt Disney's company history and its international business. Secondly, we'll be regarding the establishment of Disneyland Paris. Lastly, we will then make a comparison and evaluate, and as well as an evaluation of Disneyland Tokyo to Disneyland Paris, as well as the difference in the intercultural communication between the two. Globalization is an important concept that is considered to be pivotal in the business marketplace as well as the driving factor of Walt Disney's expansion. It facilitates international business expansion as well as intercultural competency. It allows the ability to understand, adapt and accommodate another country's culture. Regarding the history of Walt Disney, it was founded in the United States of America in 1923. It became a leading diversified international family entertainment and media enterprise. And Disneyland theme parks have been established in many popular tourist destination countries such as Shanghai, Tokyo, Hong Kong, as well as Paris. Now we'll be talking about the disparity between Tokyo and Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. And you can see from here that uh, the main difference between them in terms of success. In the first decade for Tokyo Disneyland, it became the most popular and profitable in the world with an estimated 140 million visits since it, its inception. For Disneyland Paris, there is negligible growth rates and setback in terms of debts. And in its first 18 months of opening, it has incurred about 1 billion in terms of losses. Regarding the overview for Disneyland Paris, we'll be talking about in three aspects. Uh, the first point will be food policies, secondly, employee standards, the third one, environmental. For the food policies, there's no alcohol consumption within park parameters in, uh, in all the Disneyland theme parks. This is seen by the Americans as non-family friendly. However, the French see it as an insult to the national culture as they have been, uh, as they consider it uh, to be a norm to, con to consume alcohol during their meal times. For employee standards, the Disneyland theme park uh, For employee standards, the, Disney, the Disneyland theme parks uh, use this concept of lookbooks in which there is grooming policy uh, that is uh, been laid out for the employees. Uh, in terms of how the French perceive this, they consider it to be invasive and especially inconsiderate because uh, they perceive beauty uh, differently from the Americans. There is another concept that has been introduced as well, which is the small factory, in which the employees are expected to smile at least 60 seconds after the guests have arrived. For the French, they consider this uh, to be uh, causing emotional distress and labour upon them, because the French adult, typically, is expected to show emotional restraint in the public. In terms of environmental settings, Disneyland Paris was designed to be very closely uh, with the others. The French saw the commercialized setting as a lack of authenticity. I'm going to do this again. In terms of environmental settings, Disneyland Paris was designed very closely with the rest of the Disneyland theme parks. For the French, they view this as a lack of authenticity. You can see that the popular colour 
to be in the color of purple for most of the theme parks. This is viewed negatively by the French as being major as the majority of the French being uh, mostly Catholic. Purple is seen or perceived to be a symbol of death and crucifixion, and thus viewed negatively. Hence, in the French perspective, there is intercultural incompetence because the Americans failed to adopt or adapt uh, to the French uh, cultural communication process as well as their way of life. Now we'll be moving on to Tokyo Disneyland. In terms of its overview, these are the two aspects that we'll be working on. Firstly, the work culture. Secondly, the uniformity. In terms of the work culture, there is great similarity between uh, Walt Disneyland's work culture as well as that of the Japanese. The Japanese prides itself on punctuality, uh, efficiency, and, and order. And all of these are in great congruence with the Japanese culture. In other words, the Japanese require little adaptation with regards to Walt Disney's work culture. For uniformity, the Disneyland theme park lookbook is also in accordance to that of the Japanese culture. Where, where they pride themselves on uh, the uniform culture uh, as part of their identification process. The Japanese workers view it to be normal and similar to the strict rules on the dress code in the workplace. And therefore, this leads to unresistive workers and a smooth flow of operations. As such, the Japanese perspective would be that there is intercultural similarity, which thus led to the smooth mode of operations and ease of adaption for its staff. In conclusion, you can see that there is intercultural incompetence, especially in that of Disneyland Paris, where there is a clash in terms of the culture between the Americans and that of the French. You can make this comparison with that of, Jap of the Japanese, uh, where you look closely towards uh, how the culture of, Jap uh, of the Japanese fits seamlessly with that of the Walt Disneyland theme parks in Tokyo Disneyland. And moving forward, let us move on to the restructuring and rebranding of Disneyland. And now I'll pass on to Tengi to talk more about the restructuring and rebranding. Hi everyone, I'm Tengi. Okay. Okay, firstly, for the rebranding of Disneyland Paris, okay, they have decided to adopt the concept of globalization, and that is the interaction of the global and the local, and also a co-optation of the local and the global. So what needs to be done for Disneyland Paris? Okay, they have decided of they have to understand the French culture better and then tailoring changes to the culture. Okay, there are three main changes. First is the change in management change in food policy and lastly a change in employee standards to fit that of the French people and the consumer. Okay, firstly the ethnocentric uh, view of uh, American management needs to be changed and to a polycentric one and thus uh, Disneyland Paris uh, replaced their American manager with what with that of a French manager who understands the French culture better. Next uh, using Hofstede's uh, cultural dimension Okay, the American, as compared to the French, has a lower power distance, and and they uh, are, they have a low context culture. So the French, uh, okay, opposite, they have the they have higher power distance, a higher context culture, and this needs to be reflected in their management. So they re, uh, for high power distance, they require it requires a stricter hierarchy, and uh, regarding the different uh, authority levels in the company, and as well as high context culture. They, they do prefer a uh, much more content that are French based. And lastly, uh, there needs to be improved understanding of the staff with regards to the communicative processes. Okay, the change in food policy is pretty simple. 
as you can tell, they uh, allow the sale of alcohol in four of their restaurants in Disneyland Paris. Okay, this is to cater to the more European consumers and their culture. And lastly, uh, there's a change in employee standards with regards to what Kairu talked about, about the lookbook and the smile factory. Okay, the work, firstly, the work standards are aligned with, uh, have to be aligned with French laws regarding the like, work hours and things like that. And uh, next, the lookbook have been altered. Okay, the employees right, can now uh, have a more flexible self-expression in, with regards to their physical appearance. Uh, for example, uh, a woman can uh, choose the colour of a nail, nail, nail varnish and things like that. Okay, lastly, okay, so now we evaluate the intercultural conflict and strategies uh, that we have used in this case study. Okay, as you can see, the initi initial duplication right, of success formula in Tokyo, Disneyland and as well as uh, Disneyland uh, in America itself fell short when it's applied uh, the same way the French uh, as in the case of Paris Disneyland. Okay, their idea of the communicative uh, pattern of sender receiver is too simplistic and it ignores the cultural variation that exists. Uh, as you can see, French and America is pretty different and it did not work so well over there. And lastly, using the concept of globalization allowed the French Okay, a lot better intercultural understanding with the French people, which are their consumers, who are traditionally anti-globalization. Okay. Lastly, this enabled standardization to work. Okay. Wow. Okay. Standardization as in standardization of uh, Disneyland across the world and while acknowledging the French values and the culture. Okay, so the effort of the new strategies as we can see in 1997, five years after and after their review, okay, in 1997, there's much less uh, staff turnover rate and uh, the profits soared with uh, 12 million visitors a year. This is uh, pretty comparable to that of uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Okay, and Disneyland Paris has become the top tourist destination in Paris after the Louvre Museum and the Eiffel Tower. Okay, lastly, our conclusion is that the understanding and uh, knowledge of destination country's culture is pivotal in ensuring effective communication to both the consumer and the staff and this has implications for a business. Okay. The lack of cultural competency as we can see in the initial stages of Paris Disneyland has led to uh, many disadvantageous outcomes such as uh, loss of profits and other things. Okay. Thank you very much, that's the end of our presentation.